Hello, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Major League Baseball's Inside the Diamond. I'm here with Tom Johnson and with Lamar Fields, the two baseball gurus that I know. How are you guys doing today? I'm pretty good. Do, doing well. Uh, the, Tom, where, where are you at again? I'm in Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh, that's right. Is it baseball weather there, Tom? I mean, are you still yeah, yesterday was like, like football weather. Like today, it's a little bit baseball weather. And then like the next two days are baseball weather. So uh, we're getting a mixture of like the four seasons here. I know like where Lamar is. We don't have to worry about it, man. We got baseball weather year round, right, Lamar? <laughs> yeah, right. pretty much. You can just go. You can just go out and do what you want. But but I forget sometimes that, that it's still that that um that bad that cold until I saw a game the other day being played and there were some snowballs going on and I was like oh shit I forgot all about that but uh, but okay so anyways we're back here with week three uh going in week three is around this is our third week we started off at opening day so I'll call it the third week of the season um uh to start off Tom, Tom you want to tell me a little bit about how, what happened this week in baseball anything good any big games happened this week Cool. There, there have been a couple. Uh, there have been the Dodgers and the Braves with Freddie Freeman playing against his uh, old squad. They, he got a little emotional uh, in an interview talking about, you know, how he really likes uh, Braves country still. But uh, I guess he's happy in L.A. There, there's also been like the really happy in L.A. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. He's he's got to be happy. I mean, he gave him what he wanted. So, hey, but, you know. And then there's the Red Sox and the Blue Jays. That's been a good, uh, good series so far. And you got the A's, or not the A's, but you got the Astros and the Angels. Yeah, did we learn anything this week at all? Well, we learned that uh, baseball players they never forget where they started. I, I I could say that much. They never forget where they started, even though if it didn't end on good terms, you know, they're still thankful for their time in their previous. Uh, cities and everything and they take they take that uh on with them those relationships they just they don't end whenever they leave why do you say that what made you what made you say that what made you get that well you know i think whenever you look at it you know i i, I kind of look at it as not just the freddie freeman interview with how he got a little emotional but i also think of like whenever you look at an albert Pools that comes back to st louis for one final ride you know, you think of those players like Pujols started his career in St. Louis and like now to run full circle and come back even after spending like the last decade in the L.A. area. It just goes to show you that, you know, no matter how far you travel, there's sometimes there is that opportunity for a return to play with the first team, the first franchise that gave you an opportunity. And it just goes to show you like, you know, those windows of opportunity, it's never a good buy. It's always just like, a see you later. You know, the door's just always open for a return. And he has no problem still hitting that ball, though, huh? That, that oh, absolutely not. Struggling. Oh, yeah. That was trying to get to the arch. Um, uh, L Lamar, how about you? You see anything this week? Uh, just, I don't really see it too much. I mean, it's too early. A lot, a lot of games we played in baseball. I don't. Of course, want, of course, you're too much of team to get off to a good start, but I mean, it's. I don't see two games, man. Just, just, I'm just kicking back and enjoying that we have in baseball. It's been a pretty good season so far. How the Giants do this week? Uh, had a doubleheader yesterday. Lost both games, but winning right now. Winning right now, I think five to two. Last I saw the score. Oh yeah. And uh, trying to, if they win the day, they go tomorrow. Trying to get the split out of four game series, which ain't too bad, especially after losing the first two games. That's all you can ask for sometimes. Tom, how about them Pirates? You know, uh, it's actually kind of shocking. They took, I believe it was three or four from the Nationals. I didn't think that they were actually going to do that, and they did. So uh, props to them for that. But, uh, you know, right now they actually, I, I believe they got swept by Milwaukee uh, this this Pat previous series. So uh, talk about getting momentum just to, like, give it back. But, uh Right now, they're 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 kind of where I expected them to be, but uh, I don't really expect too much from them. I mean, like Lamar says, it's still early on, but okay. Like you know what? Though you guys say it's it's early on, but I want I'm gonna do. Let's do a little call out here real quick in the early season. Who who can you tell has already given up? 
Have you seen uh, them? You just know already. You're looking at them going, oh, come on. Oh, like a move see, they uh, made, anything like that. Like, they just, like, they're tanking it already, you know? Like, it's a... Uh, well, the A's t- was tanking before the season, but they put, get on the field. They get on the field and they play the hard and win some games. Yeah, they they's unloading everybody. It's like a fire sale. <laughs> they always do that, though, man. They're like the garage yeah. sale of the Major League Baseball. Like, there's always a yeah. garage sale going on there, you know? But, uh, Go ahead, Tom. Uh, where can I say this? Uh it's it's hard to say. I, I think it's um. Let's see here. I I would the, honestly the, say the Reds, maybe Texas or the Reds. You know, uh, the Reds for sure. J- just how they've been playing so far. It's I I expected a little bit better of them starting out of the gate, but uh, hey, I mean it's still early. But I mean, it just seems like there are just certain teams. Or I can even say the Pirates. It just feels like they've really just given up already, even after signing the two guys. So How it's... terrible is that, though, if you're a fan of those teams? Because you, that's a long season. So if you if they're that bad already, then, I, oh, man, I feel, I feel for them. Speaking of that, though, I mean, the fans and being bad and low and stuff, what happened in um, Oakland is just crazy, Lamar. Do do they know that baseball is is started yet in Oakland? Dude. It's crazy. The A's always struggle with fans uh, due to the stadium, due to fans getting tired of ownership, <laughs> ownership not putting together a good team, having the I mean, garage sale every year, <laughs> having the garage sale every year. And the stadium is really horrible. I was a season ticket holder for the Raiders for many years and went to that stadium a lot. The stadium is outdated. Needs to be uh, they just need a new stadium. They're looking into Vegas. Um, so we'll see what happens there. They had mm-hmm. 3,700 yesterday, today they had 2,700. Yeah, and I uh, lost it. I was trying to pull it up here, but I lost it. Gosh darn it. But the the fact is, they average 10,000, they are dead last, yeah. number 30 in the league at 10. But listen to this. There is almost 10 teams that that are 21,000 and below. 10 teams. Now, 15 teams out of 30 get over 30,000 fans, 30 and above. Yeah. And, and believe me, those 15, 15 uh, 14, 13, they were like barely over 30,000. Okay, they're getting 30, 31,000 like that. So – what what is going on like that? That's almost and, and I hate to say it, but it's almost NBA style. But NBA got some lot smaller arenas. Tom, what's what's happening? The A's have always been like this. Uh, it, it, it's kind of like Lamar said that the stadium's kind of trashed. I mean, they've always uh, talked about revamping it, but like. Where do you put a new stadium, especially where, where how Oakland's located and it's located right across the bay from San Francisco? You know, no pun intended, but a lot of people just deem the Giants more entertaining than the Athletics. So, I mean, at the end of the day, it's like, you know, whenever you have two teams that are in the vicinity like they are, which would you prefer? I'd go to a Giants game probably before I go to an A's game. But it's just – it's always with the uh, ownership, you know. I mean, it seems like ever since – they traded Joanna Cespedes, you know, a, a while back and everything like the franchise is just hasn't rebounded. And, and it's just like, yeah, you but know, that was me, 15 teams that barely get over 30,000. That's half the league. And then yeah. and then just to compound on that. Now we have and, and, and I'm not sure maybe you guys can help me out more, but I know that there's at least one Lamar. Is it uh, um, uh, Dave Stewart? Right. Got a two billion offer in for the to get a franchise in Tennessee, Nashville. Is there more? Is that are they thinking one expansion team? Is there going to be more? Because you you got fifteen teams barely getting you know thirty thousand fans in the seats, and their top one, uh, of course, Yankees, Dodgers. You know, the, they've always been that way since the beginning of time. Like, what's going on? What is happening? Just that, I mean, 
the younger kids today don't really don't like like baseball. I mean, it is what it is. They gravitate to basketball and football more than so baseball. Like when I was a kid, I gravitated to all the sports. It's because yeah, that's what I grew up around. They, I just why don't. Why are they thinking expansion? What is the thing of Major League Baseball to expand a product that you're having a hard time selling as it is? Yeah, I don't understand that. If they expand anywhere, you need to go back to Montreal. People love baseball up there. But I, I, I have no idea. I mean, like you said, I mean, teams, Giants had like 50,000 the first opening day. They only had like 30,000 the next game, one weekend game. So I don't know. It's hard to say. I don't, unless, they, unless Nashville's a big baseball city, which I don't really know. But Titans do okay there, but. Yeah. We're inter we're interested to see if they actually fall, fall through fall fall through with with the expansion. I just I don't see it happening. Tom, do you know is there more than one? Are they thinking of uh, how are they how are they just thinking of expansion or is this just Dave getting a group together and saying he'd like to get them? I I know that they've been talking about expanding a team to Vegas, uh, just because Vegas just seems like a hot spot for a lot of things. I mean, think about it. The NHL put a team in Vegas, and I'd be honest with you, that's that being like one of the last places that I consider putting a hockey team, just because of where Vegas is located for <laughs> and like the primary reasons for what Vegas is like known for. I mean, you don't think of hockey, but uh, I know that yeah. they've been talking about Vegas. Uh, for a while, I, I actually agree with Lamar. Like, maybe even consider Montreal again. I mean, the Expos really got a lot of attention up there, and I know that uh, Tampa was flirting with the idea of um, playing half their games in Tampa and the other half in like Montreal. And Major League Baseball shot it down, and really? it's just, I, I, yeah, they they shot it down at the beginning of like this season or whatever. Like the the organization submitted that proposal, but trying to have two homes. Uh, what a sneaky yeah. but, but like <laughs> e even with like Tan even with uh, like Some Nashville, Tom Brady sneaky stuff. I think uh, with Nashville though, I'm not sure what my. I know there are a few minor league teams in the facility in the vicinity, but I, I think that you know, here's one thing I actually do think about Nashville. It's actually not a bad spot for baseball. I mean, you think of a school like Vanderbilt. They've had recent success with college baseball there. And to think of some of the guys that have come out of Vanderbilt that played in the major that played in Major League Baseball, I actually don't think that that's a bad idea. I mean, you do have a, a college baseball school that is very prominent and very dominant in that area. But help that me would understand, attract though, Tom, Tom you, you, you know baseball. Tell me why they want to expand them. They want to expand because they, they want to give other cities perhaps a shot or, you know, expand where it might be up and coming. I mean, I, I noticed that with Major League Baseball, they kind of like look at maybe where's college baseball big and growing and where is a predominantly good audience that, you know, they would thrive to have a Major League team. And, and, and in a place like Nashville, I mean, that would honestly – that could go well. I mean – you have professional franchises there already that are just, like, not MLB. But, I mean, I would guess it, it has to deal with wanting to grow the game and wanting to maybe, like, get more southern states involved just because whenever you look at the crop of talent that exists at, like, just in baseball in general, a lot of it's in the south to begin with. And it's just, like, you want to keep it growing. But it's also, like, you know, maybe expand upon what's already there. You might have college and minor league affiliates. But maybe if you get major league affiliates there too, it would just draw much more attention. Just be like, okay, th this is like an area that's growing in an exponential way. Okay, like Lamar, you know how in basketball, if you they do expansion, it it kind of depletes the talent, right? Yeah, because um, you're grabbing it, grabbing it. So so teams get, it gets a little depleted and stuff. It seems to me baseball wouldn't have that problem with all the minor league systems that they have. With all the players there is, Lamar is, is there, there's plenty of talent to to accommodate more teams, right? Talent yeah. ain't what we're worried about, right? Yeah, talent ain't what we're worried about. Just trying to get in a good spot, good space. I actually think I actually think Vegas would be a good spot because you got they're gonna buy those tickets out no matter they, what. They, the, 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 the hotels, casinos, go, the, the, hotel, uh, the casinos gonna buy the right. tickets out for yeah, they, deals. 
Yeah, they and give those to got people, people come in. Oh, let's in. go catch. Oh, we got nothing to do tonight. Oh, let's go catch a baseball game. It's, right. So, yeah. so then maybe it, is it is it a problem of we I have get, a lot of product and we have a lot of product in the wrong places. And like, I, like yeah. should 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 places like and I, and and don't kill me if you're an A's fan, but seriously, in the in this conversation of uh, of what are they doing with the expansion? Should they be taking the team away from some places? Because there were like three or four. I wish I could get that thing to pull up. But there were, Tampa, least, there were at least Tampa, three or four that were in 12,000. They got to figure out what to do with Oakland and Tampa. Tampa Bay is it's no excuse. Because Tampa Bay feels a good team every year, and they still can't get fans. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Tom? I, I think it really has to deal with about ownerships with these uh, with these franchises, and 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 a lot of it is is this. I don't think it's that the A's aren't talented, and neither are the Rays because they have talented rosters. It's just what you got to look at it from the fans' perspective is what attracts the fans to the ballpark. You know, I've I've read a lot recently about how. Tampa Bay's, like, stadium is in absolute middle of nowhere, and, like, it is absolutely hard to get to in the Tampa Bay yeah. area, and fans got to, like, travel out of their way. So it's just, like, why is the stadium there to begin with? But, like, what is so attractive about Tropicana Field that actually attracts what it attracts? I think it's more so you really have to maybe go to the fan bases and ask them, what is it that you want out of the team that the team's either giving you or not giving you that's going to actually make you go and attend the game? Right, and, and that's something that Major League Baseball around the whole has got to do. Yeah. Like, when I'm like growing up, you, well, growing up in the Bay Area, I've been to a lot of A's games, at Giants games. I tell you, A's fans are just tired of the ownership and tired of uh, them selling off their players every year. Yeah, and the stadium is the stadium is stadium, stadium is way outdated. I mean. I don't know why I just can't tear that down, rebuild because this it's in the prime location. They yeah. got they got the BART train that go drops you off right there. They got Amtrak that drops you off right at the stadium. Easy access. And what that does for an area when you regenerate it like yeah. that too, anyway, like you can it helps everybody around there. And I'm yeah. gonna stick up for Tampa Bay real quick because you know I love that place. I go there often. Um, I love each of the stadiums there. To me, they're 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 perfect. The um, the football one's a little hard because it all looks the same. They made every part of the stadium the same. So if you get caught on one side and you think you were on the other, I've walked around that sucker a couple of times trying to find my – but I love it and I love Tampa Bay and there's no reason they shouldn't be out there in Tampa because it's not bad and it's not hard to get – it's it's a great um, place. I think that's baseball. Um, and I think it's it's obvious by looking at those numbers – that they have a little bit of an issue and they've had it. And we both, we all know this for years, they've had this issue and it's been declining the, the amount of people um, partaking in little leagues to, to others. We've had uh, our own little league where I'm at. I coached my son for quite a few years in baseball and I've seen the leagues here drop off. Um, there are some times when we'll have, an because here we play all year long because it's because it's Florida. So after one season we go to the next one, but there'll be times in between those those times where there's um, you know half the teams as there is in the springtime, or half the so it's hard to field people all the time because they want to go play football, they want to go play basketball. And so baseball has to do something because they're starting to lose out. And it's getting obvious when yeah. we see those kind of things and we see ballparks like Oakland's was. And I'm sorry, I don't have that video, but it, it, it was bad. Just like, I don't know if anybody watched the USFL this weekend and you guys watched oh, the man. knew that. I, I mean, I, I literally, I knew all about it because I had been following it and I still looked up to see, was there a reason why there was nobody there? There was literally nobody in the stands. Yeah. Um, what I say a while ago, baseball got a problem when you can't even, uh, there's not even enough people in the stands where your own relatives have showed up. I mean, they can't even do yeah. that. Then, then you have a problem. There should at least be 
let's see how many players are on a team, you know, <laughs> they should at least have three people per family, let's see, there's 50, you know, there should be 150 people in the stand, right, maybe yeah. a couple friends you let in, gave a couple tickets to, let's get that to 200, all right, that should be bare freaking minimum, uh, <laughs> you got you, you got two uh, concession workers in the whole stadium because there's only 200, everybody else got to go home, that's not good, you know, that's not good, um, so we had something else go on this week. Tom, I want you to tell us what happened in San, uh, San Diego. Uh, there, there was a, uh, a collision of sorts. Um, it happened at the plate. And, uh, you know, it's just the, the way that the slide looks, it, it's not that it looks intentional, but some people would make it as if it was intentional. Here you go, and Lamar. you know, I just the way that I see this is is that you know, it's just a guy that's trying to score, but at the same time, it's a pitch, it's a catcher that's blocking the plate. That, in and in some ways, here's the way that I see this. Okay, they have they have made so many rules in the past that state that the catcher really cannot block the plate unless the ball's already there because of injuries that can happen like that or something that has happened to Buster Posey in the past where his ankle had gotten under him and he had, like, broke his ankle or his knee got buckled under him. And I believe, like, Joe Maurer had, like, a bruised lung or, like, a broken lung before because yeah, but- of a collision at the plate. But let's let, let, I got I got to I got to find that again because <laughs> look look at that go ahead Lamar I'm a old I'm a I'm a old school baseball fan so when they got rid of the collisions at the plate I was that kind of made me mad even though it did happen to it did hurt a player on my team but oh, even when it, Buster Posey when he was on the Giants when that happened but I still say after that like man let them play man this is baseball y'all y'all tinkering with too much stuff. It's not too much stuff you can take with. Baseball is baseball. You like it or you don't. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Totally. I, yeah. I totally what agree. Is that, I what, mean, what is that guy supposed to okay. do? Okay. Okay, look. Yeah. Look. Right here. Yeah. Oops. Okay. From this angle, he does look like he's in front of the the the, the plate. Like he may be. But totally, if you're think, talking technicalities, blocking the plate, he'd have to be over here. Yeah. He have to be well, on I mean, technically, block, he is so blocking not. the plate. Let's see. In, in, to, in some ways, though, angle. he is blocking the plate. I want you to see this angle right here, though. Watch this. Not this one, the next one. Because it clearly shows you how. And that right there is probably why everybody's getting a little bit upset. Okay? Because right there. See the elbow coming down? Yeah. Now, to, to me though, looks like he got him in the jewel box though too. Look at that right there, bam! Yeah. Got him, got, bam! Right in the jewel. But see, from this angle here, you can see he's off of it. Look, yeah. he's coming back. And honestly, Tom, what is he supposed to do? Because now, do, do they have to tiptoe in, and do they have to be careful of diving over to him, or what are we doing here? Like, oh, well, see, here's the thing: just baseball. What's he supposed, what's just supposed baseball. to do? Hold it. He's supposed to hold his hands to the side so he can land and break his wrist. <laughs> Exactly. I mean, uh, uh, allow me to say like this, okay? Oh, see, he's doing he the right problem. thing by sliding. I mean, the objective is is like, I I know whenever I was a catcher, and even as a runner, you were taught if the catcher is blocking the plate, then it's not like politely collide with them, but like politely say you're blocking me from scoring, and like I gotta score, so I'm gonna find any way I need to score. I don't agree with some of the rule changes Major League Baseball has implemented in regards to, like, these catchers because at the end of the day, okay, catchers got equipment on for a reason. If you're going to block the plate, you better be prepared for some kind of collision because, like, you're blocking a runner from scoring if you have the ball or not, but you also have gear on to protect you. At the end of the day, if people want to take it as, like, that Padres player is, like, trying to elbow the guy, he's really not. He's just trying to slide, but it's like the way that hit, the way that the catcher is positioned, it's like 
you really can't help but slide the way you're sliding because no matter which way you look at it, your body is blocking the plate in the way he is crunched down whenever he has the ball. It's like his face is right there. Like that's not the Padres player's fault. That's more of like the catcher's fault for the way it is. But like at the end of the day, he's still blocking the plate and the guy's trying to score. Like there's not much that I, there's not much that really the runner can do there. First of all, that was off of the Major League Baseball's uh, uh, website, so there's no copyright there, people, for who's going to try to get it later. But um, second of all, we, what are we talking about when we, we talk about legalities here and the rules? Because baseball is one of the most goofiest sports in the world where they have this unwritten rule book. So this may have been legal, um, Fully legal, because maybe you could say he wasn't really blocking the play, he wasn't whatever. But is there an unwritten rule? Did any unwritten thing get broken here? Because I can't keep following those unwritten stuff. And that to me, baseball is so crazy with this unwritten rule stuff. I don't think so. I don't think no rule was broken. He had to go way out there to catch the ball and the runner was right there. So just one of them things, nothing you can do. To me, it looked like every other play that you've ever seen. Yeah, it, it, it happened, move on, turn the page. <laughs> Man, Literally, I mean, ba baseball has – I I don't know how many times they've, like, changed the rules, but they used to have a rule with the catcher that, okay, well, the catcher can't necessarily block the plate unless the ball is in a vicinity before the runner gets there to actually block the plate. And then I'm not sure if they ever reversed that, but it just seems like – you know, they're kind of like the NFL in some instances. They don't really know what their rules are. And it's just like at the end of the day, the catcher has equipment on. Like, collisions are going to happen. You can't avoid them. Like, let them play baseball. Like, no, if, the, and, if the runner feels like they're blocking the plate, the runner's going to do what they need to do to score the run. Right. And you can't get like the NBA. Don't get so soft. I mean, the, the, the stuff that goes on in the NBA. Oh, man. Can, do not do that, baseball. Do not do that. That yeah, was a no. perfectly fine we, we, play. We don't need the There's going to be some contact. Out. We cannot have it where you fake to do something and you get a foul. That can't go on in all sports. Don't go that way because everything's getting that soft. And I blame it on the generation that comes up. Yes, call me old, whatever you want to. But this, this it's soft nowadays. I don't care what anybody says. It's soft. Sports are getting soft. <laughs> okay. Um, since I said that, I'm going to show you the total opposite of that at my, I'm going to, you know what, since we've been going and I've been thinking about it, I'm just going to call it that. I'm going to call it the uh, blank of the week and we can add in what you want to call this guy. But this took place the other day and uh, uh, I don't know, maybe he got mad that he got, the ball got hit, uh, but uh I want to show you what he ended up doing. Here we go. Watch this, guys. Boom! <laughs> In a picture there. Wow. <laughs> that wasn't out of nowhere. He was coming from the middle of the field like a rocket. And anybody who was paying attention saw that. That was about as vicious as it could get. You see that? Right there. Yeah. He's getting ready to plow, dude. Come running from way over here. Yeah, didn't see it coming. All right, look at this. Oh. Damn. Hit stick. Mm. Look, that would have been a targeting in, in football, much less in, in baseball. <laughs> so... We're going to give him the – we can say what we want to, can't we? Because this is our kind of thought, but that's the ass of the week right there. Yeah. <laughs> can you believe that? Like, I, I said things were getting soft and that play was getting – but, boy, that was just – we don't need to go that way neither. What, what do you think about that one, Tom? I'm going to go a Pittsburgh route with this and just say that's the jag off of the week. There you go. <laughs> I, I, I mean, like, you you completely just bulldozed the dude for, like, no reason. He got a hit or whatever, but, like, wow. If, if there was, like, ever a flagrant unsportsmanlike conduct in baseball, that is it. Like, 
Where's the sports? Hey, I'm thinking that? that he must have been texting his girl. Okay. This this couldn't have been just the baseball thing. Like he's been texting his girl. You, you know, he I found I would out just that PG and just, just say that's the jag off of the week. <laughs> oh my god, I saw that. I was like, okay, this this guy's got to be called out for whatever he did right there. That was. I, I'm good. Sur- I, I wouldn't be surprised if like dude faces some serious disciplinary action. He might get kicked off the team. Yeah, he I won't be think, playing no time soon. Yeah, I don't. Think I mean, he'll, like I don't think he'll be back. That, 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 that's just something called for in college baseball. And, and, you know, I don't know nothing about him. I don't know nothing about the thing. But you would think if you're playing in college with the amount, of, like I said, a, a, a double A's, triple A's, single A's, the amount of baseball that you could play, it's not like he didn't have a future. And he it, it, he must not have wanted it or did not care about anything anymore because, you know, that move right there was the end. I mean, that's pretty much trying to come back because I believe it says something like junior college or something. Like, I mean, he was already in a climb. Now you do something like that, like you might as well give that up. But yeah, see, there had to be something more in there. There had to be something more in there. He called his mama something. There was. It, yeah. it could have been because he said he something around the bases or something. Yeah, a lot of Yeah, there you go to get the best. Yeah. Of a little kiss to him after he hit a home run. Like Bryce Harper. Kiss. You get him a little upset. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, uh, hey, what are you looking forward to this week? Is there anything coming up this week? Mm. Any, any games we should be looking out for? Any uh, milestones that you know of? Anything like that? Uh, what's the name close to 3,000 hits? Uh, Miguel Barrett. That's right. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yep, yep. True that. I almost had that down. I forgot yeah. about that. Uh, he doesn't have it yet, right? Uh, he one hit away. And I think he's about to bat about half hour ago. I don't know if he got the hit or not. I don't think he did because it came through on my phone. He yeah, I was going to say, I, I've been watching too. They usually will pop it up somewhere to show you something like that. So I don't know if he's done it yet. But yeah, that's something to look forward to. That's big though. 3,000 hits. Damn. That's a... Uh, yeah. That's, that, that's, done, that's right a there. hard and rare feat in baseball to do nowadays, especially with how the pitching's getting more and more talented. That That's going to be something special. I think that's going to drive them all the way to Cooperstown, though. Oh, I, well, yeah, no doubt. Automatically, yeah, pretty much, yep. Yep. So so we got that, but nothing else? Nothing else big you guys see, see coming along? Nothing. Uh, Dodgers and Padres this, this weekend. That's always good. You got every time, them, every time them two get every time them two get together, it's always a fun fun to watch. Yeah. Oh yeah. On the field and off the field, right? I mean, yeah. the fans, the fans are always there's always something yeah. going on with those two as well. <laughs> That's never good, guys. Stop that. Stop that. All right. Um. All right then. Well, uh, thanks again, guys. That was great. Uh. Once again, early in the major league season, it's a long haul. This is a marathon season. This ain't no sprinting season like the NFL. I call it NFL sprint. Two weeks and you're, you could flip any old way like that. Baseball, we got a long way to go, people. Still cold in Pittsburgh. It's going to warm up. Right? Until, until we see the flowers and the trees and the – and the, the April showers in Pittsburgh, bring May flowers. Then, 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 yeah, then we ain't even hit inside the – the real season yet, right, guys? All right, man. Well, then we will catch you guys all again next week. We'll have something more for you. I hope uh, we will have somebody else stopping by next week. So uh, in any case there, we will uh, get together once again. Thank you guys for coming by. It was fun. All right, then. (laughs) We will see you guys next week. Peace.